Hi friends, welcome back. This is Solomon Jagwe. I am back with another quick insight. Uh, and it has to do with uh, the Unreal Remote 2 that has received uh, an update. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I kindly ask that you spare a minute to subscribe and hit that notification bell. So you're alerted when I post a new video and I'm always, always grateful to everybody else that has subscribed. I appreciate your support. So today I'm gonna chat a little real quick about the update that has uh, come in and this has to do with the the annual remote 2 for virtual production and so i was on my tablet and i noticed something there was like an update you know and it had been if i go to version history here it had been almost a year since this plugin had received an update and back then it was supporting unreal engine 4.23 and one week ago, there's a new update. So I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder what is new. So I went ahead and I loaded up my iPhone 10 and took a look. And for sure, the interface looks totally different because uh, sometime back I did an, another video. And you can see it in this uh, clip right here. I'll link in the description below. But you can see the interface is different. Like right there in the corner where we, we use the control uh, like to zoom in and out is different. And you can see the differences right there. So this interface is completely updated. And so that's what the major update that has come in from the Unreal Remote 2 that is showing up in the interface. And whereas before, like in this version right here, and let me see if I can play real quick. You can see that uh, the, this window popped up. You, in order to use the, uh, the virtual camera, you will pop up a window. There was an option to pop up the window so that it was you're recording in a separate window. But this new update incorporates all the functionality into the viewport. Wherever the camera that you have activated is going to be displayed right there in the interface of uh, the Unreal Engine. And uh, in terms of uh, preference, I don't know, these buttons seem a little bit bigger and easier to work with than the ones that I see here. Like, I mean, I can tell that you can still go in and bring up the controls right there. So to zoom in and out, for example, you see that? So I can go left and right, go back, zoom out. <laughs> And I'm using the cabin scene. This is a free scene that's available on the marketplace, uh, which looks really great, by the way. <laughs> so you can use that. And I also noticed that uh, the stabilization has been changed as well. So here, let me see if I can increase it to around maybe 60 and also 60 over here. And then we can close. And so there's more stabili stability in when it comes to the scene. Okay. So that is the major update that I, I wanted to share with you guys. And um, let me know what you guys think about the interface, if you like this better than the previous interface. Uh, personally, I mean, there are some things that I like about it and there's some things that uh, I still prefer in this interface but overall i think the main update is that this new version the update that has just come in it works with uh, the unreal engine 4.26 so maybe that's the main reason they did that and considering that it's been a year since they updated it it does say something about uh, the importance of this update so I, I imagine a lot of work has been going in uh, from the unreal the, from the epic games team and so I'm going to be digging some more and see how it works. And let me actually see. I'm going to lift up my iPhone 10 so we can actually see what it looks like when I'm doing handheld. So again, the idea of the virtual camera is for you to be able to do like handheld, you know, camera tracks, like look around the room. And because I have an iPhone 10 and it has a depth sensing camera, you can actually go in and out of the scene. Okay, let me put this down for a second. <laughs> it looks like I'm on the floor. <laughs> All right, let me pull this away. And then let's pick up the camera. And actually, I need to deselect. All right. All right, let me pick up the camera. 
now I can go in and out like that. And so another thing that of course that I'm interested in is the depth of field. So let me click on here. It's auto, turn it off. And there's the depth of field that has kicked in now. So if I pick up my camera, let me see, is it gonna... All right, so for a second there, it looks like it's locked into, and yet we want it to be automatic. Okay, so now I think it's automatic. And you can see how stable it is. So as I, I move closer and I move back like that. So guys, check it out. I mean, give, give it a chance and see what this new update uh, has to offer. And I mean, the exciting part, of course, is uh, 4.26 support. But more than anything, I think is the stability, you know, being able to handle, because every time I would press escape, for example, there would be like a, an error message showing like a lot of things that had crashed. <laughs> so it's a relief to see that this is no longer the case. And uh, I'm hoping that this is going to make it easier for us to create a uh, text of uh, the virtual camera. And so, so fun to look around <laughs> and feel like I'm right there in the scene. That is really cool. And let me pull, pull back a little bit. That's really cool. And now I, I'm, I'm going to be doing another test and see. I'm going to mount this on the trolley and do like glides in and out. And <laughs> I've seen Marcus Brown. Like he had like this one video where he showed a camera actually tracking him, like almost like a robotic camera that's gonna be so cool being able to if you could mount this on a robotic arm and to be able to track and i'm thinking this mainly because i'm right here working as a one person but like if you are an indie filmmaker and a storyteller i think this is gonna be really handy to work with and to shoot scenes in uh, virtual rather in uh, real time because i'm looking at all of this and i'm like wow look at that it looks really really good so pick up this scene guys and check it out and test out with a new virtual camera and I'm testing with the iPhone 10 but if you have a, an, an iPad you can use it as well especially if it has a, a depth sensing camera. So I tested it with this ta this iPad Pro that I have and I don't get the depth sensing, depth sensing or see the movement back and forth like I do in the iPhone 10 and maybe because it, the, this, uh, this is a 2015 model and so the newer iPad Pros have depth, depth sensing cameras. So that's maybe, that's maybe that's why you're able to do that and you're able to go in and out of the scene. But uh, this is pretty cool. I'm very, very impressed and I'm grateful to the Epic Games for this new update. And you're still able to do a tech record, uh, rather uh, record the session. And you're also able to adjust the resolution. So right now I have mine set at uh, 1920 by 1080. That's why it's able to fill out the screen right there. And, and actually, if you want to, were wondering if uh, o, o, like the autofocus is working, all you gotta do is watch this little dial right here. That's how you know that it's focusing and changing focus. Like, just like that. So guys, that was a quick insight into the new uh, and <laughs> updated uh, Unreal Remote 2. It's available on the App Store. It was updated a week ago. Uh, by the time you watch this video, depending on what time, it, what year it is or what month it is, it might be much later. But it's been a year since the, this uh, app has been updated. So to see the major changes that have come in is very, 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 very impressive. Thank you so much, guys. And please uh, spare a minute to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're alerted when I post a new video. And dare to dream big don't ever give up on your dreams may we continue to harness these tools especially the unreal engine to render in real time i can't wait for the unreal engine 5 man <laughs> to be able to you can imagine this uh, set right here the the entire light I mean, looks like it's baked lighting but in unreal 5 unreal engine 5 it's all gonna be real time like ray tracing so i can't wait for that so see you next time with another insight guys Bye for now.